Hello guys, today we're gonna continue with the Shadow and Flame mod for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06, this time with the Isengard faction against a hard random army on the beautiful map West Mnet. And we're gonna take a look into every single change they implemented into the new Isengard. Let's get it started. Alright, we're gonna build up two furnaces as the primary resource building, that's how the city is looking like. Looks pretty dope to me. Don't fall behind. Let's pick up this Lumber Mill. I mean, the choices are pretty much the same, Lumber Mill or Slaughterhouses. You are able to recruit now many new heroes like Wolfgar, Grima, Sharku, Ugluk and Lourdes and Saruman. But Lourdes is a bit more expensive if I'm not mistaken, yeah, 2000, so he's pretty expensive. Alright, let's buy this Lumber Mill right after. And now we can move downstairs, we have also power points we can pick. And the only choice we have is the War Chant. Move your feet. Alright, we can also make some more workers to get some more money over time. Oh, we are against a Rohan opponent. Let's use Warchan and fight those peasants, shall we? And yeah, look, Grima is so ex so cheap. 200. Let's recruit him, first of all. You can easily win those fights because those are no orcs. These are Urukai. Their armor is thick and their shields broad. You will definitely need some more money. Come on, there we go. Furnaces. Uh, because furnaces are gonna uh, decrease our cost for the upgrades, and slaughterhouses would make our work riders cheaper. But the main army is based on Urukai and uh, you know infantry units from Isengard. What is this? Becomes invisible when standing still. All right. More furnaces, please. More money. And they have also the level 2 here, Feast. Instantly heals units for 50% of total HP. That's crazy. That's actually crazy. Isengard looking great so far. Look at the furnace's design. Everything is looking a bit different. I like this mod so far. I really do. On their level 2 now, bam, we can use it and we are healing up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> nice. So. More furnaces. And then we can actually start making some heroes. We can take a look into the units later on, but I would first of all like to see all the heroes from Isengard. Okay, gonna make full furnaces here. Get these towers up on the field for some defense. Oh, he's making more and more, he's recruiting more and more peasants. How much damage is he actually dealing? Not much, he's quite squishy and doesn't deal too much damage either. But it's fine, we can always peel back because if you don't know, Urukai are the strongest. And also the tankiest, as well as the best looking swordsman in the game by far. Next hero on the list is going to be a cheap one, Sharku, I believe is the cheapest one, Sharku is gonna be the next choice. War hero from Isengard, level 2 now for Grima, level 3 is gonna unlock his sabotage, which is gonna enemy resource structure is disabled for a moderate amount of time. Very interesting. And Urukai are so strong, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Elvin is there. <laughs> Elvin, Grima, the show match. Killer, Grima, come on, Grima, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Why is she so fast? Holy moly, she's running in light speed, and Grima <laughs> was like moonwalking. Level 3 now, finally, Sharku is on the field. Let's creep this work level with Sharku, and the next year on the list is going to be Ugluk. Okay, we have the Urukai level 3 now. This is gonna be. Can we right click on this one? No. Right clicking normally causes the auto cast, but that's not possible for this ability. The feast. Okay. Listen to my words. He's not dealing too much damage, but he's attacking quite fast. Look at this attack speed from Sharku. But doesn't hit like a track. Ugluk is gonna be the next hero on the list. He looks like this. Let's take a look into him actually, zoom in a bit more. What is it? What you smell? What is it? What you smell? Looks pretty Oh, in the meantime, though. In the meantime, though. Oh, don't run. Run, Grima. Grima, warm tongue. Oh, no. Grima has been taken down. How is Sharku looking like? I mean, pretty realistic. Again, this is a game from 2004, guys. I like this design quite a lot. Let's get a Wolfka on the field because we already know Lords and Saruman, so we can take a look into them later on. Look, this shark is dying one on one against Warcrider. Ugluk against Wark. 
I mean, unlike Charku, Uglug is actually attacking quite slow, but he's hitting way harder. Okay, level 2 now, that's great. We're gonna lose this mill, but that's absolutely fine. And now we have Vulka, who's looking like this. It's a Dun landing, and Charku, uh, I mean, Grima is also back in the business. And this is Vulka, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like this. Also pretty realistic. I like this design quite a lot. But Charku has to be careful. He's taking way too much damage. Let's peel back a bit. And now we have also enough money for Lourdes. We have two power points collected. We can invest that into the Kribane of uh, Kribane from Dunland. Uh, reveal stuffed enemies, 50% damage, 100% experience, and 50% armor. That's crazy. I'm actually curious if this stacks up with the Warchan, because if it does, that's kind of crazy. Okay. Now, at this place, we will be building a tower for 400 resources only. Let's actually build two towers for the defense, and we can also build up the Uruk Pit first. To be able to get some units on the field. What is it? What is, what is it? <laughs> Alright, so let's creep this one right after. Oh, look, he's creeping. He has so many units on the field. Holy guacamole. The towers are looking like this. I like this design with units on top of the tower dealing damage. Crossbow man 400, Urukai 300. They are cheaper. I mean, they are more expensive. They normally cost 200 each. And also, crossbow men are more expensive. Alright, we have to peel back with Ugluk. I paid a high price for the safety of my Shark people. also has to peel back. Let's not lose our heroes again. The towers are doing a nice job. I'm actually curious if we are also able to put units inside the tower. Come on. Nice. We got level 3. Oh, he's stealing my money. Come on, dude. Don't do that to me. Come on. Come with me. But these ar this arches have longer range than our towers. That's kind of interesting. With level 2, they have the Flaming Arrow Volley. Okay. And we are not able to put them inside the Zitter. Unlike in the patch 1.06. Lourdes is back in the business. He has Cripple, different picture. Uh, Cruelty is something like the Carnage, pretty much. Then you have Cripple. Now that's Captain of Orfang. Leadership bonus to Nervia Light units. Heroes, they need to peel back. And from the level 2 Uruk pits, we are able to recruit different kind of units, but we need to first of all protect this area, very important. Uh, can we also recruit Saruman? No. Ah, uh, because of the power point we need to unlock first. Oh, the towers are actually getting melted down from our opponent units, which is meh. We are, we are forced to get more units on the field, we are losing quite a lot. Quite a lot, actually. We gotta keep an eye on the heroes. Lourdes has uh, also the fighting Urukai, calls forth the scouts of Isengard. Oh, Kofmok has to be careful. I mean, that's not Kofmok, sorry. Ugluk has to be careful. Help him. I'm starving. <laughs> he has level 5 units on the field, by the way. We have to rebuild the towers as soon as possible. I mean, we are against a hard army, but this feels a bit harder than normal. We are now able to get some Berserkers on the field, and once we have the building level 3, we are also able to recruit Isengard Sapper. That is Theodred <laughs> from Rohan, and we already know this hero because we have already played Rohan in the last video. Let's cripple him down so he can't move. And now we can also draw the sword and use the currency. Okay, we are now leveling up like crazy, but Ugluk, unfortunately, got killed. That's fine. Sharku has to be careful. Did Sharku die too? Yeah, Sharku died too. Holy moly. A lot of units he has on the field, but we have at least collected many, many power points. The White Hand spawns White Hand Monument. And this one is going to be Mordor Scam. Let's use this one. Because we will need some reinforcements on the field as soon as possible. Oh, we are also able to use uh, to summon Grishnak. And uh, what is that? Bloodthirsty Grishnike is hard to kill, gains 25% armor. Alright, let's fight for the map control a bit. In the meantime, we have so much money, we can actually do quite a lot. We will definitely need some more towers first. We, our furnaces are looking great design. Look at these towers. Next to the furnaces, that looks dope. Let's build the armory first, and also we can maybe get a secondary production building, which might be the work pit, but also the Dunlinding longhouse. Let's take a look into that. Our units are doing a nice job. 
I mean, they are also leveling up like crazy. With level, uh, what is that? Tick armor. It's a passive, but I don't know when this is gonna be unlocked. I did not Wolfgang on the other side has the chance to. Um, the unlandings is a leadership, pretty much. This one is going to be. Oh, it's a meta impact. The this one. Sword Strike. And once you are level 8, King of the Hills, Norby the unlandings be temporarily increasing their ammo by 200%. That's quite a lot. Okay, what is this actually? I don't know what this is, but we are getting attacked in the meantime. Armory. Oh, we have not much money left anymore, right? Oh. What is this? Devastation? We can use Devastation maybe to get some money from the trees. But we are getting out range here. And Lourdes died too. Oh my goodness, come on. We have to get there and also fight for this area. Oh, look out Berserkers. They are looking like this. Very different. Let's use also Warchan on them and also Kribin. To make them even stronger. Let's see how strong they can become. Come to my aid, Oh! What the heck was that, bro? What is this? There is smaller bombs on their back. What? I have made well, this is choice. crazy. <laughs> alright, alright, nice. I was surprised for a second. I was like, what the heck is going on? They are like suicide bombers. <laughs> Pretty much. Anyways. This is the building called uh, Dunlanding Longhouse. Looks like this. You are able to recruit some long bowmen. Uh, X-Men. Let's actually recruit both of these. And once this is level 3, you are also able to recruit the unlanding Huskarls. I don't know what this is, but we're gonna take a look into that later on together. I mean, this outpost is gonna be in trouble. Because once again, we are not able to put any units inside the outpost, unfortunately. This one is the bomb, I believe. I wanna see that. I think these are normal Urukai, but I didn't even know that. I should have read it. My bad. We have so much money now again. Um, what is this? I, mean, I want to. I want to actually see everything. Let's use this one here, maybe. Soon I will be drinking ale from curved horns. Why? Who's screaming right now? Oh, look at this damage you're able to deal with this suicide bomber. That's crazy. The white hands monument looks like this, and around this area, our units are gonna get 50% more armor. So it's a quite unique mod, I need to say, and it looks fun. The only thing I don't like is that the archers are, are outranging our towers. That's kind of meh. I don't like this. The towers are not going to be that impactful anymore. Sharku is level 6. Once he's level 10, he will also have the chance to summon warp packs to his side. Armory. We can also buy this one. Uh, what is this? I don't even know what this is. But anyways, we have now long bowmen on the field. We have now some units to fight with, finally. Okay. Alright, I wanna recruit one more of these. Look how fast they are coming, do you see that? That's crazy. Oh, look at the unit size. It's like also different uh, compared to... Oh, did we combine them or something? No, we didn't. These are swordsmen, these are archers, pretty much. Let's try to destroy this outpost now with this unit, shall we? We have to get some more units on the field to defend this outpost too. And yeah, we lost one of the heroes, unfortunately, but it is so it is. Let's recruit more units. And once the armory is finished with all the upgrades, we can also demolish that because we don't need that. I want to see the damage now, once again. Look at this. That's quite fun though, I need to say. <laughs> Isengard is looking dope. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about the Isengard changes, guys. You can also build the work pits now to see the differences in the work pits. Our heroes are taking the damage for no reason. What is this? Heavy armor. Let's actually buy this, but it's so expensive too. Okay. You can fight for the map control a bit. I want to see how fast they are able to kill those peasants. Let's take a look into that. But it looks like BFM reforged. Am I right or not? Guys, look at this design of this Berserker. It looks like the FME Reforged to me. This is a crazy design. Holy guacamole. Looks pretty epic to me. Lords, please attack back. You know what would be awesome to add to BFME 1 as well? Just like in BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King, if you would have uh, some... You can also combine them, really? Yes, you can make a big army. Uh, it would be awesome to add something like a battle stance, you know? 
Like, for example, in BFM and Rise of the Witch King, you have the um, Hold Ground stance, which is a defensive stance, then you have the normal battle stance, and then last but not least, your aggressive stance, which makes you attack everything automatically in the range. Lords, you can cripple them down, maybe? What sort of king? Wolfgar is back in the business, too. My choice. Keep quiet. But he's gonna die quite fast. He's face taking all the units. And with the war jump, we can make them even stronger. Let's do this. Let's fight now. And also, this one is gonna make them eventually stronger, I feel like. We are also able to use Devastation once again to get some more money. Let's do this. And then Mortal Scum can be used this once again. We have now many, many power points collected. We are able now to get Builds me an army, worthy of Mordor. Urukai are produced at a significantly increased rate for a moderate duration. Then you have also the Freezing Rain. But let's go this one. I mean, we are now able to recruit some more Urukai and crossbow men faster. Let's try how fast they can come out. Holy moly, it's like Call the Horde from Mordor, right? Look how fast they are coming, that's crazy. And also the animations are looking great. Look at the Uruk pit. Generally. Looks so much better, am I right? This is level 3 finally, now we are able to get those special units, we are only able to recruit 3 of them at the same time. And just like in BFM1, you are also able to combine your Urukai with your Cosmo Man. Just like that. Okay, but I like the fact, what is this? Theodrates on the horse. Lords can cripple him down, so he can't move anywhere. You are not going anywhere, my Oh, you don't even need to. So let's build back a bit. They are also able to give them... Uh, nah, they have no fire arrow upgrades, by the way. Uh, you are only able to get the steel bolts. But we are running out of money because we are investing so much money into upgrades. But we have a huge army now. Holy guacamole. Let's fight until we have enough. Oh, this, these are the units, by the way, the special units. Every faction, I believe, has this. In which you are only able to recruit a specific number. And they are looking like this. Look at this graphics and look at this design. That looks dope. And you are also able to purchase banner on them. But that's pretty much it. They have also Mordhau Grip. Dunlending, Huskars and Bridal use Mordhau Grip. Ignoring armor and dealing bonus damage against heroes. Great. This one is going to be a Noble Lineage. And Nervy Dune Landings receive 50% increased experience and fear resistant. Banner Carrier to make them level 2. And once they are level 3, Reckless Swings. Um, increase attack damage by 5%, but reduce the armor by 5% too. So we can get them all now banner to make them level 2. And we can test them now pretty much. Uh, what, why are our units not moving forward? I'm not sure. We can all give them all the upgrades we need, like this. This way they're gonna be stronger. Okay, let's fight. You wanna fight? You wanna play rough? I am down. I mean, Warp Pit is pretty much the same. You are only able to recruit Warp Riders, so no Warp Packs, nothing like that. Uruk Pit is different, because you are able to recruit this unit, which is quite unique, doesn't exist in normal BFME 1. And this building, generally, is very unique. You have also Ugluk as a hero. Reinforcements from Saruman. Summons two hordes of Uruks. Let's do this. We have also Orkis Medicine. Medicine. He is Nerby Friend, the Urukai units and heroes. So we can right click on it. To activate it automatically or left click on it. You have also the Hunt for the Ring. Nerby Infantry and heroes gain 15% movement speed bonus and a 50% experience bonus and fear resistant. And then once we are level 7, the Headhunter. Ugluk and Nerby, Nerby Uruks gain 100% damage. Well, this is kind of crazy. We lost a hero, didn't we? Yeah, we lost a hero. <laughs> Explaining too much. And once we have 10... Oh, Lord of Orfang. Allow Saruman to be recruited from the Citadel. And holy moly, that's gonna be epic now. Let's get the White Wizard on the field, shall we? I mean, remember with Rohan, we were able to recruit Radagast. And with the... Uh, Say it. Uh, Gundabad faction, we were able to recruit the Durin Spain, the Balrog himself. Um, I want to see also Saruman. I want to see Saruman too. We are getting so many power points now. Warc Riders are looking like this. Heavy armor is not even possible on them. Different picture. All, they are pretty normal. And even weaker than normal, I would say. Because you are not able to buy 
heavy armor on them. We can't make them really strong anymore. Builds me an army, yeah. And I also like the fact that we have now 600 command points available instead of 400. Very nice. Let's use whole ability. Looks pretty much the same too. Nothing too crazy, but I like this design of Isengard base and especially the Zitter. Looks awesome. Okay. I mean, now we are strong, but we are not able to get fire. I'm actually curious what happens if you use this now. Uh, you are able to attack with fire once. So you need to be extremely wise with your choice. Okay, we have now every power point unlocked from the Spellbook of Isengard. The Freezing Rain was the last one. All enemy units lose all leadership bonuses for 3 minutes and we already know that. Aldir is gonna be face tanking against our units but he has no chance. And the Alvin hero from Rohan is going to be taken down. Okay, Saruman should be coming very soon. Actually it takes a lot of time. No, I don't know why he was waiting for it. Can't tell. We are under attack. Oh, he has this outpost too. We need to destroy this one. And ideally we need, we need to destroy this outpost here. This way we can start sieging him or this one. Doesn't really matter. Okay, level 10. He has to take armor now. And also the fighting Urukai. You are able to summon more units on the field this way. Nice. Looks great. I like the design from the stable of Rohan too. The garrison is looking great. The farms are looking the great. And look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Who is here? It's the white wizard himself. Saruman. And look at this design too. Oh my goodness. That looks dope. And every hero... In this case, you know, it was the case for Gundabad faction with the Durin Spain. It was the case for uh, the Rohan faction with the Radagast the Brown. And also for Isengard, the Saruman, everyone is coming on the field with level 10. They have everything available. And they don't cost that much, but you need to invest many, many power points to get them on the field. And you have no Balrog summon or you have no EOD summon. What is this guy here doing here? <laughs> Dude! Do not look back. Oh. That's an enemy back. hero, right? Yeah, enemy hero, so we can't use it. Saruman, help your warm tongue, please. Fireball them, Saruman. Ooh. Leave my, leave no one alive. Oh, but he's actually quite efficient. This one is gonna be voice of Saruman. Can we steal them? Listen to my words. And now you are fighting for us. Fight for me. And I will hold your... No, no, no. no. That's not Saruman. <laughs> and then you have also the endless supplies. Instantly upgrades Isengard units in radius with all upgrades. Holy moly. And then you have also the Red Horns Wrath. Can we cast it over the wall? The answer is yes, we can. Oh, we can't. Okay, I was too excited. My bad. Where is the ring? Quickly. Where is the ring? I want to. I want to use it, though. I want to use it here, maybe. No, 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 no. Oh, we can cancel it too. Look at this cloud. Oh, it's like Thunderbolt from Rise of the Witch King. I'm happy. Looks nice. So let's buy this outpost now, and then uh, let's recruit two of these, and that means we can finally start sieging. And we have also siege works, of course. Quite cheap, actually, 720. We can make three of these. Let's destroy this farm this way. We can cut his eco. Grab this money on the ground. Set waypoints. This way we can lead to this farm right after. And once again, furnaces, because they are tanky. Or tankier than slaughterhouses. Our heroes are leveling up like crazy, but this guy has to be careful. He right click, so he's going to automatically cast this when it's available. Who is this? Ah, that's Ugluk. Looked like Eomer to me for a second. My bad. Now we can also try to destroy this outpost with the self bombers. They are also looking quite different. I want to I want to take a look into them. Yeah, they have like. Do you see that, guys? They have two mines behind. <laughs> that looks so dope. This design, though, for a game from 2004, that is awesome. That is awesome. And by the way, guys, this channel is dedicated to BFME content. So if you are looking for more content like this, please consider subscribing as well. It would be quite helpful. Boom! Nice, so Nice, so And yeah, we can start sieging now with Ballistas. Ballista, Ballista, Ballista. I mean, the ladder is the same, the better ram, the better ram is the same, pretty much. Nothing has changed. Let's go for a Visa Plus, maybe. Look at this peasant, they are also looking different. 
Boom! Saruman of many colors. Okay, now we can also make some berserkers, normal ones. This way we can get this outpost under our control. Uh, we have not many trees left anymore and they have to walk a lot. Let's use this one to kill this farm in the middle of the map. We are on the map West Mnet, by the way. Where was Gonda when West Mnet fell? <laughs> I mean, Rohan needs help. This Rohan needs help. Trust me on that one. Okay, let's siege. Because it's a hard army, he will always close the gate. And I'm not gonna play against easy army because there is no challenge in that. Hard is always better. I like challenges quite a lot. Right, let's use whole ability to make them stronger. And this is also gonna increase their armor but decrease their damage. Alvin units are getting invisible. The siege continues. A couple of more hits and it's gonna be enough. And I really like the changes to command points. I like the fact that you are able to get some more units on the field. No, I never was a fan of this low command points in BFME 1. And this way you couldn't even snowball your lead that much. You know? When you had advantage, you had always a problem being command points kept. But being able to recruit more units is a great adjustment. I'm a big fan of that. And also the units are looking so realistic. Look at this Urukai. Do you see that, guys? It looks like BFME Reforged to me. Look at the shields, look at the graphs, look at the helmet. That looks so dope. And also this circle around them. That's awesome. I mean, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm happy. Thank you guys so much. You know, I don't know if you guys watch this, whoever made this one. But if you are watching, great job, guys. Great job. And of course, the link uh, to this you know, mod is going to be in the description down below. If you want to download and try that yourself. And the next video is going to be about Gondor. And the last video is going to be about Mordor. I'm actually already excited about the changes they implemented into these two factions. <clears throat> and if you don't want to miss them, make sure to subscribe and also leave a like. And also, you could be checking me out on my Twitch channel, guys. Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. That's the place where I'm streaming every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday. We are hosting tournaments, events for BFME games. I would be super happy to meet you also in the upcoming live stream. Are we the bad guys? Alright, let's give them forge plates. But I thought when Saruman is nearby. Ah, you have to activate it. No, you can't activate it. Okay. I wanna see the damage from this against the Sitter. Let's see. Ooh, nice burst. I like that. One more fireball. Do, 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 do. <laughs> nice. Alright, Sharku is leveling up like crazy. He's now level 9. Level 10 was needed for the summon, but we won't be able to see that, unfortunately. This guy is already level 9. Oh, look, this nervous siege engines gain 25% damage. Well, this is crazy. Oh. Go That's crazy, too. Sabotage. Enemy resource structure is disabled. Pretty good. Wanna see that? How it's looking like? Did we use it already? No. Uh, I'm in BFME 1. I'm not in Rise of the Witch King. I have to right click. My bad. Okay, it's used now. I don't know what is happening, but it's something is happening. Apparently, he's not getting any money off this anymore. And these are the last three buildings. Once we are able to destroy them, this game is gonna be over. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was a pretty short one, I would say. But we were still able to take a look into everything. Into heroes, abilities, you know, units. My first impression? Awesome. <laughs> I'm a fan of this one already. I'm gonna try to play this also in multiplayer. Because I believe this can be actually quite funny. You know me. I don't normally like mods that much. But this one is looking promising. This one is looking really promising. Oh, we lost the units here. Let's summon Grishnak. And let's get this farm back, shall we? And the last building is dying and we are victorious just like that. GG well played, hard army. But you are not that hard anymore, huh? Thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, please don't forget to leave a like. i see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves and as always... Stay beyond standards. Peace.